everyone, my name is Eddie Trustovich. I'm an academic here at La Trobe University's Department of Engineering and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the IEEE Young Professionals publication. Today we have a very special guest here with us, uh, John Nurse, and we're going to talk about professional performance for the young engineers of the future. John, welcome. Thanks very much, Eddie. John, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your career and uh, what context you can add to this uh, particular tool that we're going to talk about? Well, I'm a chemical engineer by my training and I spent 32 years in uh, engineering and project companies, in, in project management but also in senior management. And I was able to see the things that went well and the things that didn't went, go well in the way in which work was done within those sort of organisations. Uh, as part of that uh, responsibility as a senior manager, I got involved in this uh, professional performance program. It's run by a group called the Warren Centre that's located in Sydney at Sydney University. And I, I could see the value of introducing that not only in industry to the uh, professional graduate engineer, but also the advantage it could bring to uh, undergraduates and uh, people doing advanced degrees. John, you've had a very rich career. You've worked in engineering, you've worked in business development, you've managed processes and people. What are some of the biggest uh, lessons that you've learned in terms of what's expected from you as a young engineer coming in in terms of the technical skills and also the soft skills and the professional performance? Well, I can certainly give, my, uh, give you my experience as a, as a manager who is interviewing young students coming into the organisation. When we look at uh, the CV and the results from university, we know that they have all of the technical skills that, uh, that we need. And the real issue that we're trying to look at then is how they're going to be able to perform potentially as a, a middle manager and senior manager in the organisation. And to be successful in that, they really need the soft skills. They need the ability to work with others, to work within a team, to lead teams. That's what's going to differentiate the, uh, the high performer from, from the average performer. Of course, there are going to be roles for pure technical specialists. Uh, but the majority of routes for advancement require a substantial element of those soft skills as well. It's often perceived by young professionals that competency and technical competency is the most important and the only important thing when you're going out to industry and getting career promotions. What are some of the other important elements uh, that young professionals need to consider? Well, when you look at any profession, there are always standards for, for competency. That's uh, normally your undergraduate or postgraduate degree or maybe some uh, advanced uh, training that you do. And there are ethical standards that you, you have to comply with. But the third component is performance. And many, uh, many professions have standards, standards protocols for the way in which their professionals are, are to perform. And I think uh, that uh, young engineers have to consider when they go out into industry, however good a degree they, and qualification they might, might have, the sort of thing that they're going to be asked by their potential employer is, how are you at uh, working in teams? How can you solve problems? Uh, how do you ensure that you're delivering the right outcomes to the stakeholders that you're working with? These are elements of performance. They are not the technical expertise that might be the heart of the, the uh, degree work that you've done. Well, in terms of engineering, we define it as the way in which an engineer approaches, arranges and undertakes a new task to ensure the delivery of the final agreed outcome. So ethics and competency are two legs of the chair, but the chair is going to be unstable without the third leg, which is performance. Some uh, people have said to me, can I get qualified in performance? Let me tell you a little story about that. If uh, you consider your role as a driver, uh, you have ethical requirements that talk about uh, uh, you can't change the number plates on your car. You have competency requirements, which will give you your driver's license or your probationary license. But we're, what we're talking about is performance, and performance is what is done day by day. And however much you might say, I have my driver's license already, you are still going to be checked on your performance on a regular basis, the random breath test, the, the speed control, even the guy who's checking the parking. So this is the, the continual responsibility for performing well is what we're talking about in performance. So we've defined performance, but how do we break down performance? Okay, so we can take that uh, performance part of the pie and we can break it down into eight elements. Just in simple terms, they're described as the stakeholders, the task, competence, public, risk, innovation, management, and contract. 
So can we go through and actually define each one of these uh, elements and what they consist of? Okay, well there's a very detailed protocol that's been developed for engineers, a couple of pages of quite fine print, uh, but we have a very practical version, a plain English version of that, which I'll go through with you. The first one is called relevant parties and stakeholders, and that's where you ask your, the, yourself the question, do you clearly understand the relationship with the people who depend on you and those you depend on and their expectations? The next one is fairly straightforward, it's the engineering task. Have you discussed and agreed with the person you are working for the objectives and extent of the task you are doing? It sounds very straightforward, but very often there isn't a clear definition or it hasn't been properly agreed between the parties. The third one is competence to act. That doesn't mean whether you're a competent engineer or not, but it does mean have you checked that you have all the skills, the tools and resources required to do the job? That's a question you should be asking yourself before you embark on an assignment. The fourth one, statutory requirements and public interests. So are, are there some regulations that you have to comply with and are there, there issues that you should be considering in terms of the public? The fifth one is extremely important, it's risk management. Are you effectively identifying and managing risks which may prevent the proper performance of the job? Now this is looking proactively at the start of an assignment at what risks may occur and how you might be able to mitigate those risks, but it's also uh, uh, an approach to how you deal with risks that might arise as you go through the task. The sixth item is engineering innovation. You should always be open to the possibility of innovation even through uh, the execution of a task or in planning a task, but you also have to consider that an innovative solution has some elements of risk and you have to find ways of managing those. Absolutely. Uh, the seventh one is engineering task management. Are you applying the appropriate task management processes? So if you're working within an organisation, there will be standardised procedures that are appropriate to that particular environment and that particular industry. And you need to make sure that you are complying with those uh, methodologies. For a student, it may be there are requirements uh, about the way in which an assignment has to be presented. So you have to make sure that you follow that. The last one is the contractual framework. You can appreciate in the industry the contract is going to be very important. But also we look at this to look at the commercial drivers. What are the, what are the outcomes that you're trying to achieve? Uh, and uh, if it is to produce a product with a certain performance, uh, which is going to provide a certain profitability for an organisation, we have to look at everything that's going to drive towards, towards that outcome. The professional performance uh, set of tools that are introduced are very comprehensive. So does that only apply to young engineers? Look, it's interesting. Uh, as you say, I've had a lot of experience in industry and looking at where projects in particular, because we were a project organisation, where they went wrong, where we've had failures, what have been the causes. It's, it's fairly rare that those causes have been due to technical error. There are all sorts of methodologies for checking designs and calculations. The, where there are problems, it almost always stems from lack of communication, lack of understanding. Uh, more and more large engineering enterprises are organised in silos, technically based silos, and the people within those are not talking to each other. So professional performance is something that applies all the way through the profession and industry, and it's uh, aimed to break down those silos, to improve the, the uh, communication and understanding and using that to get better outcomes. So the eight elements of the professional performance are applicable to the young engineer, the budding and future engineer, as well as the well-experienced manager in industry. Hi, my name is Daniel Hook. I'm currently a second year university student studying civil engineering at La Trobe University. In the future, I hope to enter the world of civil engineering, specifically focusing on humanitarian engineering. I found the professional performance tool set to be very useful. Um, professional performance is something I feel we all naturally uh, take up in our engineering process, but this really gives you a clear and succinct way of defining it and a way of managing uh, professional performance. It's a hard thing to make to keep on track of where you're going with the project, but having a clear tool that uh, lines each individual step and allows you to annotate them really makes the process a lot easier. I'm Benjamin Clark, I'm a third year civil engineering student here at La Trobe, currently taking business side of engineering. 
Project management tool will be ideally used in a variety of situations, obviously, but within subjects it can be used for group assignments or team assignments to obviously help uh, delegate work efficiently and make sure everyone's on the same page. But moving forward from that even, within work integrated learning or even industry professions, it prepares you and puts you in good stand for when you enter the industry to have a good understanding of how a project or any small task that you're going to be given is implemented. It gives you a good protocol to follow. So learning to use the professional performance checklist today uh, gave me a real confidence knowing that I have work integrated learning and design projects going forward. Especially in fourth year we really enter the world of genuinely using our engineering knowledge. After having a presentation by John Nurse it was really um, amazing to see the way he actually brought his experiences into, from the industry into his pro, uh, program, the PPI program. He, he used real life experiences to actually describe and discuss how we can actually mitigate issues and get involved and understand the intricacies of different projects. So certainly in terms of what we're learning at the Trove, this is going to be extremely beneficial for our future learning.